Welcome back to my Blender video editing tutorial series. This is part three, and in this part, I'm going to show you how to add together a bunch of frames, like if you've rendered out a 3D animation into a bunch of frames and you wanna add it together into a video, I'm gonna go over that. I'm also gonna show you how to join strips together into a group of strips. So if you wanna like sync up the audio and video and then just leave them connected as if they're one strip, I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm also gonna show you a few more shortcut keys and I'm also gonna show you how to fade in and out audio and video. And I'm also gonna show you some cross fades that you can do in between video. And I'm also gonna show you how to use the text feature in Blender. And I'm going to show you how to scale up and down the text, change the font, change the color, add a shadow to the text, and a bunch of things like that. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to add in a bunch of frames and compile them together into a video. So if I press Shift A right here, you can see there's image sequence. So this is mainly used for if you've done like a 3D animation with Blender or something and you wanna compile it together into a video. So I'm just gonna click on this and then you can just locate to where the frames are on your computer. So um, I'll actually leave a card to this video on my channel. Uh, this is a 3D product that I made. It's um, some game ready, uh, low poly nature. So I made a turntable with this. And so I had to render them out to images before I put them together into a video. So I'm just going to press A to select all of them and then click on add image strip. And you can see here it is. So if I press play, you can see it's now playing just like if it's a video and uh, it's not going to automatically detect the frame rate. So you're going to need to tell it what frame rate you want. Um, if I wanted to change it, I could change it to 60, but it's going to go really fast. I know that I rendered this out at 24 frames per second. So I'm just going to leave it like this. And also I did make a tutorial on how to render out turntable animations. So if you want to check that out, there should be a card up there. Uh, if you want to watch that video on how to render out turntable animations. And this strip, you can basically just treat this strip uh, just like any other strip. So I can cut it with K or I can hard cut it with Shift K. Um, I can also grab these handles and move them and just do things like that. It basically just works like any other video strip in Blender. So I'm just gonna delete these now. So I'll just shift click on them, press X and delete them. And then I'm gonna move over to frame one. And then I'm going to be adding in this video on how I created Wallace and Gromit in Blender. Uh, you can check out that video. There'll be a link in the video description if you wanna check out this video on this how video, I made Wallace gonna... and Gromit. And you can hear me, let me just turn this down a bit. Okay, so you should still be able to hear that, but it's gonna be quieter. So something that I almost always do when I'm video editing is I actually join the audio and video together into one strip. And that way I know that the audio and video aren't gonna get messed up. So they're gonna stay aligned so that um, when I'm talking, the voice isn't gonna be messed up. And also it just makes it easier so I don't have to worry about the audio and the video. So once this is all synced up um, to join it into one a strip, it's actually called a meta strip, I press control G. And you can remember control G um, because G makes a group. So G turns it into a group. So now if I just play this, you can see it works just the same uh, and you can still cut it and you can still trim it and basically do whatever you want, but they're joined together. So this is super awesome feature. I pretty much always use this when I'm video editing. And if for some reason you want to undo this, you can press control alt G. So control alt G is going to take everything that was in that strip and bump it back out. So if I just press control alt G to undo that, um, I can basically just press control G with whatever I want and it's gonna all join them together. So I could actually add in this thumbnail right here, just like this. I could also add in another photo or video. Basically anything that you have selected, you can just select everything and then press control G. And that's all going to add it in together into one strip. And you can actually see it kind of gives a visual representation of what's inside it. So you can see there's that purple there and purple there. And those are photos that I added in. And if I want to go and edit this, even though it's combined into one strip, I can actually do this. If I press tab with the strip selected, you can see we're in kind of a different view and we're actually inside that meta strip. So you can see here's all the things that we edited. Let me just make the end frame longer. So here's all the different stuff that we edited. I could, you know, edit this, maybe I delete this, maybe I duplicate this. I could actually cut these things or uh, I could actually change the volume of the audio. But then when I press tab again, we go back out into the normal edit. So 
then I can just, I can do that with this too. Like I could tab into this one. You can see here it is and tab back out. So in the 3D side of Blender, tab goes into edit mode within an object. So if you already use the 3D side of Blender, this should be pretty easy to grasp, grasp because uh, Blender uses tab to edit objects. So it kind of makes sense that you could press tab to edit the meta strips. And you can also rename these. Uh, so this is something that I also wanted to talk about. You can actually change this. So I'll call this maybe video two and maybe this, I can click on this, name this to video one. And if you don't see this side panel, you can uh, press N to open it or just click on this little uh, arrow right here. And you can see there's that video. So you can actually name it. And right there you can see now it's uh, renamed. So if you're working on like a really big project, uh, you can actually name things and that way you can remember them and have them more organized. I also wanted to show you guys how you can hide strips. So if you wanted to still use a strip, but maybe you want to just hide it for the time being, just because maybe you'll come back to it later, or maybe you think you may not use it, but you might use it. So you want to just kind of leave it there, but have it hidden, you can press H. And so just like in the 3D side of Blender, when you press H, you can hide an object, but it's still there. And you can see now it's gray. And now if I play this, it's almost like it's not there. I could just like move it down move this on top and it's basically still there, but it's hidden. And then if you want to uh, unhide it, maybe you want to use it now, you can press Alt H and that'll unhide it. So this is a really great feature. I do use it a lot when I'm video editing. Like if I have some uh, video that I might want to use in the future, it's really easy just to hide it and then just maybe move it down here and just press H to hide that. And then if I want to come back to it, it's still there. Another thing that I use pretty much whenever I'm video editing is I lock strips. And this feature where you can group the strips, if you don't remember the shortcut key, you can click on strip and you can see it says make meta strip. So just select the strips, then click on make meta strip and you can see the shortcut key is right here. Another feature that I almost always use when I'm video editing is the locking feature. So if I want to, let's say, lock this one, I would just select it and I would press shift L. So you can remember L is for lock and you can see it makes uh, these uh, kind of marks on it that are going sideways. And now if I press G and try to move it, I can't actually move it. I can still tab into edit mode on the meta strip. So basically this strip is now kind of secure, so I can't move it. I basically can't do really anything with it. Something to keep in mind though, is if you press S, it's still going to use that moving within the strip feature. So you can see uh, this is something to be aware of because you might accidentally press S and move it. So this uh, strip locking feature is really awesome. So when I'm done video editing something and I want to make sure it doesn't get messed up or accidentally deleted or moved, you actually can still delete it. If I press X, I can still delete it while it's locked. But if I just want to make sure it doesn't move or get messed up in any way, I can press uh, Shift L. And then if I want to unlock this, like maybe I want to move it over here, I can press Shift L. Alt L. So Shift L to lock, Shift Alt L to unlock. And again, right here, you can see lock and mute. And so you can mute strips with H and you can also lock strips, Shift L. There's the features if you can't remember the shortcut key or you just don't want to remember the shortcut key, they're right there. Now I'm going to show you how to fade in and out audio and video. So uh, if you press N to open up this panel, you can see if you click on any strip, it doesn't have to be a meta strip. If you don't want to use meta strips, it can just be a strip like this. You can see there is this opacity. And if you change this to zero, let me just play it to update it. You can see if I turn this to zero, now it's completely transparent. And so it has this checker here because it's transparent. And then if I turn this up to one, you can see now it's at one. So I can actually animate the opacity to fade it out. So let's just say right here, I want it to start fading. Actually over here, I want to fade it in. So I'll turn this to zero. And then uh, we're going to be doing some animating. So to add a keyframe, keyframes are what you use to animate something. And if you hover your mouse over this value, you can press I. And now that adds a keyframe. And you can see it's yellow because the keyframe's added. And then when you move it, you can see it turns green. So green is telling you that there is a keyframe on the video, but it's not exactly where you are. And then if you move to exactly where the keyframe is, it's going to turn yellow. 
and you can see right here it's on this frame and you can see it turns yellow because there's a keyframe right on that frame so now i can move to where i want it to be fully faded in so i'm just going to move it to maybe over here then i can change this to one or you can click on it and press one enter then i can hover my mouse over this again and press i and now you can see it actually gives you a visual representation of it fading in and if i move back and forth you can see it actually animates so it goes from zero to one so if i just play this and it fades in now let's do the same thing for the audio because i'm using a meta strip i'm actually going to have to press tab and go into the meta strip to animate the audio but if you're not using a meta strip just click on the uh, audio how you would normally so what i'm going to do is i want the uh, audio to be fully faded in about the same time the video is faded in uh, i'll actually make it exact so what i'm going to do is go right here to where it's fully faded in i'll tab into here and you can see we're just already right there and then i'll select the audio i can move over to the volume and press i so pretty much all of these values within all of blender you can actually animate them uh, and also if you other click you can see there's some different settings here like you can delete all the keyframes or clear all the keyframes um, I'm, i already added a keyframe but you can click on like if i delete this keyframe and uh, other i'm using right click to select this so uh, if you're doing the right click select uh, that'll probably be if you're using left click select it might be left click um, but yeah then you can click insert keyframe so if you don't want to remember i as the shortcut key to adding a keyframe uh, you can click on it other click on it and press insert keyframe so you can see now it is at one and it's yellow because i added a keyframe right in there now what i would do is i would actually tab back into the normal view i would move back to where it's set to zero then i would tab in so that i know where it is select this and then on the volume change it to zero and then press i and now it actually gives a visual re representation of it fading in and actually if you added in the uh, uh wave waveform drawings it'll actually show you how it slowly gets bigger and bigger so now if i play this from somebody and they were wondering if i could make a video and there we go so now it fades in so i will show you how to fade it out but it is the same exact thing so i'm just going to move over here i'll press i with it at one then i'll move to where i want it to be fully faded out change it to zero then press i again to add another keyframe and then i'll tab into the meta strip change this to zero press i and then i'll tab and you can see because i didn't add another keyframe to fade it in it slowly fades out but we're going to add another keyframe to tell it to not start fading out until it's like over here so i'll tab out of the meta strip i'll go over to about right there where the other keyframe is then i'll tab back in and that way i know where it is i'll click on the audio change it to one and then press i again and there's the visual representation of it fading out so now let's just play this uh, went into sculpting and i just started to and there it goes now it fades out now if you don't like seeing this uh, checkered texture of the alpha channel when you actually render this out to a video if you're using uh, the video format that i use which i talked about in part one of my series um it's actually just going to be black so you don't have to worry about that it will actually turn black but if you want to have better visuals of what that's actually going to look like we can actually add in a new strip to preview how that's going to look better and to do that i'll press shift a or click on add and you can see there's this color strip and on default it's set to black uh, but right here on the side you can actually change it to any color you want so if you wanted it to fade out to a color you could actually do this and what i would do is i'd put it underneath this strip so as it fades out it's going to turn into this so i'll just drag this out and make it so it's fully covering the part where it fades out and you can see it's not really doing anything it's just fading out to this uh checkered and that's because we need to actually select your video strip and on the blend value 
right here, you need to change it to alpha over. So I can see alpha over is right here. And basically what this alpha over is telling it to do is to use the alpha channel that it has in it. And also when you're adding in like stock footage and stuff, you need to change this to alpha over so that like, if you have like maybe a gunshot VFX or something, uh, you can add it on top of the video. So now you can see if I play this, and I just started to... now it actually uh, renders out, it actually sh previews black. So Again, you don't really have to do this if you don't want to because it is going to render out to black uh, if you use the same file format that I use. If you use a different file format, I think there may be a way to render it out to an alpha channel, uh, but I'm not sure. But that is just a way to visualize it uh, fading out. And then there is another way to fade out video. Um, what I can actually do is if I want to, let me just duplicate this with Shift D and move it over here. One thing that I can do is instead of fading in the video, I can actually fade out this. So I'm putting the color on the top, so I'm putting it above the video, so that way you'll see it first. And what I'll do is I'll actually animate the opacity. So pretty much every video strip is gonna have this opacity here. So I can just press I to add a keyframe, then I'll move over, over here, I'll change this to zero and then press I. And now it does give a visual representation here. It's hard to see because there's that black thing there, but if I play this, a cool idea. And so I thought that was a cool idea. And you can see it plays in. So this is another way to fade in and out video. If you wanna do this, uh, it is kind of a simpler way. So if you wanna do that, you can do that as well. It's your preference. And if you're using this method, you will just have to fade in and out audio how you normally would because this uh, color strip, it doesn't affect the audio at all. So just animate the audio how I showed you earlier. And of course you could change this color. So if I want it to be white maybe and fade in from white, I could just do that and you can see there it is. Or I could even do it to something else. Maybe do a nice blue. Cool idea and so a cool idea. Now let's say that you faded in or out your audio and then you realize that you wanna change it. Um, and so you wanna actually change the placement of the keyframes because let's say maybe you want it to fade in a lot longer. You can see uh, that's how quick it is, but maybe I want to fade it in and have it take more time. You can actually edit where you've placed the keyframes. So I'm actually going to be showing you a new uh, area within Blender. What you do is I just like to add it in right here. So I'll move over and you can see there's this crosshair. I'll click and drag out and this will make a new window and it's actually the same window because on default it just uses the same window. But you can click right here and I'm going to change it to this. So this is the graph editor. So I'll click on this and you can see here is a new window uh, which you may have or may not seen before. Um, if you're doing 3D animation in Blender, then you actually use this for animation. And to move around in this, uh, I can middle click to drag around. I can also press control to change the size just like this. So I can press control and then middle click. And then also I can just like zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. So if I have this selected, uh, you can see here is the actual keyframes. And if you don't see these, you should be, be able to press period on the number pad and that way it'll jump to it. Like if it's way up here or something. So you can actually edit these keyframes and you can see there's values here. So this is zero and this is one. And you can see the opacity is one and zero. So you can actually edit these keyframes. So if I want to make uh, it longer, I can click on this keyframe. I can press G to move it, and then I can press X to constrain it to only go back and forth, and I can just pull it way out. So if I just uh, press G and then move it way out, and I can also click down with my middle mouse wheel and then let go once I've constrained it to this axis and just pull it way out. And now you can see it's actually gonna fade in a lot slower. So if now I play this, now it fades in a lot slower. And to do the audio, I can do the same thing. So I'm using a meta strip, so I'll just press tab to go into edit mode, or edit mode, <laughs> go inside the meta strip, and then I'll click on this right here to select it. There are keyframes, different keyframes for the audio. So uh, I can press, uh, if you press A, it'll select and deselect them. Uh, and I can also press B and box select the keyframes. Uh, that's another way you can select the keyframes. And then I'll press G and X and just move it out. And then I'll tab back into here, move it back and play. And there we go. So 
this is a great way to animate the keyframes. And also if you want to like delete the keyframes, you can press X and delete keyframes. So now I will close this because I don't want to use it anymore. So I'll click right here with my crosshair. I'll actually move this way to the left and then I'll move back to the right and then let go and that'll close the graph editor. Now there actually is a really quick way to fade in and out a uh, video. You can see if I just select this and then press shift A, you can see down here there's actually this fade and you can click on like fade in and out and that way it'll automatically make it fade in and out. So if I just select this, you can see it fades in and fades out. Um, so this is a cool feature in Blender. It kind of is like an automatic thing, but um, there isn't as much control. So if you want to do it manually, you can also do that because like I couldn't choose how quickly this fades in and out. I could use the graph editor like I talked about earlier. So I could change this to the graph editor, zoom in, and then I could uh, edit these keyframes. I like to do it manually just so that I can very quickly uh, choose what I want to do. Uh, but that's there if you want to use it. Okay, now I'm going to bring in uh, the how I created this hobbit hole scene. So I'll just drag this in. I'll press Control G to join it into a group. And I'll just cut it and make it a lot smaller with K and just delete this side. So now I just have a little part. So now I'm going to show you what to do if you want to fade in between uh, different videos. So if I want to fade from one video to the other, I'm going to show you how to do that right here. So first of all, what you need to do is overlap your video so you can see i have this one here and then i have the how do i made the hobbit hole scene uh, i'll leave a link in the video description to that as well if you want to watch that video so what you need to do is first select the one that you want it to start as and then hold down shift and shift select the one you want it to fade into and this is very important that you do that so first select the one you want to start out as and then shift select the one that you want it to fade into then you can click add or just press shift a and let's go down here to transition and you can click on gamma cross and what it does is it adds a new strip in between these two strips and it actually fades in between them so if i just press play cool you can see it fades in between them and if you want to change how fast or slow it fades you can actually just select this one and you can move it so if i make it really big the gamma cross is going to make it bigger I thought that was a cool idea. And you can see now it fades in between them really slowly. And if I want to fade really fast, I can just bring this down, make it really small, and then it fades really fast. And then also there is another cross that you can use if you want to use this. I'm going to click on this and just delete it now. And then I'll do the same thing. So I'll click on this, shift click on this, and then I'll press shift A. And on transition, you can see there's this thing called wipe. So if I add this, this is another type of fade. And you can see if I played it, it wipes down. And so if you click on this wipe, there are a bunch of different settings. You can make it go uh, up instead of down. So now it goes up. You can also change it down. You can also change the angle if you want to like rotate it. So if you rotate it like this, now it's going to wipe this way. And then also there is this blur. So you can change this blur value. And that way the the fade is going to be blurred so this is a really cool effect and it just works the same way so if you want it to be slower just pull it out or if you want it to be really fast just pull it in now i'm going to show you a few different things that you can do with this side panel so if i just select this video strip or just here i'm going to use the meta strip uh, but you can also just select a video strip you can see there's a bunch of different settings here so with transform if you open that up there's actually these mirror settings so if i click on these it'll actually mirror it y and x so if you want to quickly mirror your video you can do that um, also here on offset you can turn that on and you can actually move around where the video is so that's something that you can use if you want to use it i will be going into like transforming and moving around video in more detail in the next part also if you want to make your video play backwards you can click reverse frames and you can see now it's actually playing backwards so it's actually playing the ending of the video at the starting so that's just something that you can use maybe if you're like have you ever done those videos where you film yourself like jumping off something and then you play it backwards and you like jump up and you look like you have like a super jumping power so if you want to do that uh, this is just a really easy way to do that and then if I tab into here and click on the audio, there are a few things. So the volume, that's pretty obvious. You can change the volume if you want to make it 
uh, quieter or louder. And then this pitch, this is actually how fast the audio is. So if you want to make it like really slow, I can make it like a 0.5. And now you can hear it sounds really slow. And if I change it to like two, you can uh, hear it now is really fast so the pitch is basically how fast and slow it is but if it's slower then it will sound deeper and if it's a higher pitch it's gonna sound like a mouse or a something or a chipmunk <laughs> and in a future video in this tutorial series i'm gonna show you how to speed up and slow down video and i'm gonna use this pitch feature to like make the video really slow if, or make the audio really slow with the video so i'll show you that in a future video in this tutorial series and then the last thing i'm going to show you in this video is how to use the text feature so if you press shift a you can see there's this cool text feature and uh, you do want to make sure this text is above your video so that you can actually see it you can see it's really small right down there and this can again basically just be used like a normal video strip so you can press k to cut it you can trim it and do whatever you want then right here i can make what i want to say so i can write like blender is cool and then on the size here this is pretty uh pretty simple i can just change the size the color if you want to change the color of the text this is really easy just to change the color and uh, this color value within blender most color values you can actually animate so if i want to like animate the color i can maybe make it green press i to add a keyframe and then move it over here and maybe I'll change it to like pink and then press I and then you can see it actually changes the color. Then there's actually this font feature. So you can click on open and if you have a font, you can add it into Blender because the default font is kind of weird. I don't like it too much. So you can add in a font. And if you're looking for free fonts to use, there's this super awesome website that I use. It's called 1001fonts.com. I'll leave a link in the video description. It's a super awesome uh, website where you can get free fonts and on the side of them you can actually see the licensing of each font so make sure you use the license properly but a lot of them are free and you can just use for whatever you want so i'm just going to click on open and you can see i've actually downloaded this font from 1001fonts.com so i'm just going to add this in and you can see uh it's pretty hard to see let me just change this so it's super awesome that you can do this uh in a earlier blender version uh actually a lot of earlier blender versions this wasn't a feature so it's pretty annoying um but this is finally in blender and it's really awesome so i use it all the time because i don't really like the default text in blender it doesn't really look that good so i just added my own font and then size obviously you can change the size and then on the location you can change the location to where you want so i usually use this you can also animate this like if you want the text to like move around uh, you can animate this just like I showed you before. So if I were going to animate this, I would maybe move it over, move it to where I want, press I on both of these to make sure there's keyframes. And then maybe I go over here, move it over and then press I. And now if I play this, the text moves just like that. And then this warp width, this is if you want to have like text overlapping on itself. So let me just uh, move this down just to show you. You can see if I change this warp, it's actually going to change uh, like how the text is stacking on itself. And then also, if you want to have the text fade in and out, you can use this opacity. And just like I showed you earlier in the tutorial, you can animate this opacity. So if you want to fade in uh, text, you can just do that very easily right here with this opacity. Another feature that I wanted to show you with um, audio is uh, sometimes with audio, there will actually have some data within the audio for where the audio is coming out within the different speakers. So if you have two speakers and you're playing some music or something, sometimes they will actually build within the audio data. Like some audio is going to come out here, then some audio is going to come out here. And so actually it basically is surround sound. And also when you're listening to music or something, this might be happening with headphones. So there may be audio coming out of these headphones, this side, or there may be audio coming out of this side and it might kind of switch. Um, if you want to actually turn that off, you can click on mono and mono makes 
the audio so that no matter which side it's on, it just makes it um, completely the same. So it'll come out of both sides. Another feature that I wanted to talk about is deinterlacing video. So uh, most cameras don't really have this problem, but there are some cameras or uh, video formats where um, you may have seen it before. You can uh, look it up online. Basically the video format um, makes it so that there's these little kind of strips within the video. It kind of looks like uh, the video is just slightly moved around. It's like the all these little lines. All my cameras that I have now don't do it, but if you have like a video camera or something and it does have this interlacing, you can actually tell Blender to de-interlace the video. So this probably is an issue that most people don't deal with, but if it is, I'm just gonna show you how to fix it. So just select the video and then you can click here on strip go to movie strip and then click on de-interlace movies and it'll go through and de-interlace it. So again, this isn't really a problem that I deal with, but I used to deal with it. I used to have a camera that would do this. So that's just there if uh, you want to use it. So this is going to be it for part three. I hope this tutorial series has been helpful so far. In part four, I'm going to be going over color grading and I'm also gonna be going over these modifiers right here. There's some different cool modifiers. I'm gonna show you some different stuff like this. And I'm also gonna show you how to use this adjustment layer. And I'm also going to cover adding in photos and I'm gonna be going through some different issues that you might be having when you're adding in photos. And I'm also going to show you how to add in stock footage. Like if you have like a gunshot VFX or maybe some smoke or or something and you want to add it on top of the video i'm going to be going over that in the next part if you'd like to support me and this channel i do have a blender market store and i also have a gumroad store where i'm selling 3d models and assets and tutorials and on my patreon i have all these 3d models and assets and tutorials that you can get and i also have all the tutorial files on my patreon so these are some great ways to support me if you'd like to help out but even just following me on YouTube and watching my videos are a really great way to help out. So thank you for your support. So you can join me in part four up on the screen or in the video description. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part.